Hello, my name's Thomas Gregg. I'm part owner of um, GoFly Online, head of IT. I'm doing my BFR today, a little bit nervous. The reason I got involved with GoFly Online, I've got my own business. I could see the opportunity with the, the likes of Netflix and Stan and all those kind of streaming services. I could see definitely an opportunity that GoFly Online had a market there like open, ready to have you know viewers and subscribers and, and was a perfect opportunity. Hi, my name is Damien Wills. I'm the CEO of GoFly Group and I'm also a deputy CFI of GoFly Aviation. And today we're going to be looking at doing a, a BFR or a biannual flight review with a good friend of mine and also a business partner of mine, Thomas Gregg. So a BFR basically um, is a, a review that every pilot has to do every two years um, just to make sure they're, they're still safe. The main thing to keep in mind is a BFR isn't a flight test, it's a review. Saying that though, if you know a pilot doesn't fly to a safe standard, obviously we can stop them from flying until they get more refresher training until we deem them safe. It's an opportunity for the pilot to reskill themselves on, on areas where they may be lacking in their flying. I am a little bit nervous about the BFR today. I've known Damo a long time and business partners with him in Go Fly Online, but there's always that nerves around, um, you know making sure I don't do anything wrong, making sure I hit the numbers that I need to. Nervous in general, I know it's not a, a flight test, but obviously no matter when you're flying, you always want to be flying at 100%, but then you've got that extra person over your shoulder and yeah. So it's a part of the aerodrome, at what height can we, if I want to go left now, what height can we turn left? Um, 1,500. Yeah, or what sort of distance? Okay. About three miles. Oh, I'm impressed, okay, good. <laughs> So the interesting thing about when you do a BFR with a, with a good friend and obviously Thomas is also a business partner is that I tend to, I sort of feel sorry for Thomas because he's a friend, I tend to be paranoid that I'm gonna be easier on him. Uh, so I end up actually probably being harder than a normal student. Uh, but what we're looking at today is basically we'll go through all the sequences, so circuits, stalls, practice force landing. It's their opportunity to, to say, look, I haven't done this sequence for a while or I'm feeling like I, I need a bit more training in this area. On all BFRs, I look at doing what I call a, um, something out of the ordinary that they're not expecting, but I won't tell them that aspect. So today, for instance, we're gonna surprise Thomas. I'm gonna be saying to him, um, Look, there's an issue um, with an aircraft that did a hard landing on the runway. They've closed Calandra Aerodrome, so we can't return to Calandra. It's going to be closed for two or three hours. What are your options? You've only got an hour worth of fuel left. Um, other than that, yeah, I enjoy doing BFRs. They're, um, they're, they're good fun. So let's just say we've only got a, an hour worth of holding fuel, but you're going to have to wait two hours. So what, what are your options? What, what would you do? Uh, well, alternatives. Uh, Kabulcha yep. to start with, then yep. over to Redcliffe. Yep. And worst case scenario, we've got Kilcoy. Uh, which which airport would you use? Ah, uh, Redcliffe. Yeah, okay, sure. Field okay, so let's just assume we're going to go to Redcliffe now, so I want you to plan. You need to set yourself up for flying into uh, Redcliffe and we'll go and do a touch and go uh, and, or we'll have a land, we might land and have a chat right. at Redcliffe. Okay. All stations, Kabulcha, Sling 7788 is overhead Palmerstone Passage east of Kabulcha, inbound Redcliffe 1400. Yeah, so you just you just say tracking direct, tracking direct. Because we're not giving an inbound call. Yep. Okay, so in, in the flight, I, I quizzed you on visibility below three thousand feet. You sort of got there eventually, but you were a bit rusty on there. So visual flight rules guide. It's online on the Casa Air Service website. Uh, or you can buy, purchase a physical one, a physical one here. You really need to know this, this manual inside out. And it's basically rules of the air and, and also all, and your visual minimum. So I saw that's one, you've got your weather forecast, which is great. Not much point having a weather forecast if you don't know what the, the minimums are for you to be able to safely fly. So we just departed uh, Redcliffe and we're at uh, 1,000 feet. So what's your visual minimum for VFR flight? So uh, we're below 3,000, we're at 1,000 feet. What's your visibility requirement right now? Uh, 5,000 kilometres. Yep. And so 5,000 kilometres, that's five, it. Sorry, 5,000, five kilometres. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> got to say, uh, question again. we got to see Mars. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 1,500 uh, from cloud? Okay, okay so we're, we're below 3,000. Right. So it's a bit different. Yeah, so 500 feet. No. Clear of cloud. That's better. So when you get back, have a look at your visual flight 
guide. Yeah, on your VFR minimum. So below 3,000, it's it's 5k. Clear a cloud. Yep. And inside the ground of water. Yep. Okay, so uh, I'll head, head towards the calendar there. 5,000 metres, not 5,000 kilometres. No, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> In the air. <laughs> that's a really nice day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just know that, you know, really, really important. Obviously, it changes if you're in, in, in control of the airspace as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, so have a good look at the your VFR G uh, mm -hmm. the next couple of weeks just to refresh yourself on that. Yep, no well. worries. Any questions? No questions. Right. I think I went pretty good on the BFR. We went into Redcliffe, which I haven't been into for a long time. So it'd be about five years since I've been in there. We flared, well I flared a little bit high. But generally after that, you know, the nerves sort of seemed to settle down a little bit. And then going through the routine on the way back to Caloundra was fine. And yeah, the landings into Caloundra were fine. So I was happy at the, at the end of it. Take your time, the landing. Nice and slow on the brake when you got across it. This has flared a little bit high there. Yeah. That's pretty common with the new, new runway. People tend to, oh, I don't want to land too low. Yeah. So I flare high. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Thomas went quite well today. There's a few areas he needs to, to work on. So I did tell him that the Calandra aerodrome was shut, we had to divert. He uh, used the Ursa and the, the map to divert to Redcliffe. A little bit rusty, had to talk, talk him through a few things, but that's pretty normal. He hadn't been to Redcliffe for a long time. Uh, Redcliffe being a one, one runway often has a has a has quite a, a strong crosswind, and today was no exception. There was up to a 12 to 14 knot crosswind. Uh, the landing was, wasn't was fantastic, it was still safe. Um, so what, what was highlighted there was a, sort of his crosswinds were a bit sloppy. But other than that, he did pretty well. Uh, he didn't scare me at all, so that's a good good sign. We're good mates, so it was uh, yeah good that, um, that he passed it, uh, a relief. Long-term goals for flying would be potentially getting my RPL, uh, being able to sort of fly a, a larger aircraft. I think I'm sticking around the recreational side keeping it fun, but yeah, we'd, we'd like it to fly a larger aircraft and be able to fly more people, yeah. If you would like to see more aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to watch some of our online lessons, visit gofly.online. If you would like to learn to fly, visit goflyaviation.com.au.